Morning. Good morning. It's good to see all of you here today and welcome to those of you who are on Zoom. Welcome to worship. Today is the second Sunday in Lent. Lent, wilderness, broken hearts, being lost. We think around us and our lives and our world in our own homes and on the national news. We think of the wildernesses and the lostness and the broken hearts. So let us attune our broken hearts today to God's presence and let us together in this service cry out for God's help. Please look at the picture on the cover of your bulletin for a moment. And then hear these centering words from Mary Oliver. You can have the other words, chance, luck, coincidence, serendipity. I'll take grace. I don't know exactly what it is, but I'll take it. Let us continue in our worship of God with this music. Thank you. 
Those who are easily able, would you please stand? And join with me now in this responsive call to worship. It is from the Gospel of Luke. So Jesus told them this parable. Which shepherd, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when she finds it, she lays it on her shoulder and rejoices. And when the shepherd comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for my sheep that was lost I have found. Our opening hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. prayer for the day. Oh God, we know that through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come, and that it is grace hath brought us safe this far, and grace will lead us on. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Please share in the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ to all of you on Zoom. Welcome. It's good to see you. Our scripture this morning is from Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. O oh God, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to you, God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come as your flock. We come out of a most bewildering, confusing, and frightening world. We come into your church where there is 
your presence surrounding us, giving us a sense of being cared for and enfolded in love. Speak to us now through this word and through this sacrament. Amend our broken hearts so that we may go out into the world as your own. We pray in your holy name. Amen. The metaphor of lost and found is one of the most powerful concepts in scripture, getting lost, being found. Fred Craddock, you've heard that name mentioned from me a lot, a teacher of mine and one of the great preachers of all time, of our time, I think, tells this story from his life. When I was a kid on the farm, my sister and my brothers and I would like to play hide and seek. Now, you remember how that goes. One person is it, and whoever is it hides their eyes and counts to 100 and then says, ready or not, here I come. And the rest, of course, are supposed to be hidden. And then the person who is it comes looking, and when they find you, they touch you and then beat you back to the base, and then you're it. Well, my sister was it. And I had a place under the porch, see, and under the steps of the porch. Because of my size, Fred was very small, even as an adult, but really as a child, because of my size, I could get under those steps, and I knew she'd never find me. Here I come, ready or not. And here she came, Fred writes, into the house, out of the house, in the weeds, up in the trees, down in the corn crib, in the barn up and down those very steps that I was under. I could even see the soles of her shoes through the cracks of the steps. She couldn't find me. I was down under there just snickering to myself. She'll never find me. <laughs> She'll never find me. And it occurred to me, she's never going to find me. <laughs> and after a while, I stuck out a toe. <laughs> And she came by and she saw my toe and she said, I see you. And she ran back to the base and she said, ha, 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 you're it. And I would come out and brush myself off and say, oh, shoot, you found me. What did Fred want? The psalmist knew this. Created me a clean heart, O God, and put a new spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Beloved, it's a natural instinctive drive, isn't it? To be independent, to go out on our own. I mean, whether we're a four-year-old toddler or a 14-year-old teenager or someone off to college or someone launching a new career or a 40-year-old in the middle of a midlife crisis. But then... Always, in our independence, there comes this experience in our lives of getting lost. How many times does that play out in our lives? We thought we had it all figured out. Out we go into the world, our strivings, take the, wherever our strivings take us to, man, some strange and wild places. It's fun for a while. But the danger we got into and the damage we could have done and the predicaments of trying to go it alone got us isolated and lost sometimes where no one can find us. I mean, to be independent is a natural desire. It is a good thing. I'm not saying it's not. To be courageous and brave I mean, aren't we precious? Aren't, can't, can't you just look with God's eyes and see how precious we are and brave, how we launch out into the world seeking to be independent? How, how shall I say it? We, we, we're developmentally appropriate when we do that. But I guess what this psalm is saying and what I'm saying is it has its limits. There comes a time for another developmental stage. And that comes when we realize that when we are alone, truly alone, and on our own, we are also lost. 
It is in partaking in the delusion that's so common in our world that independence is the final stage, that the gift comes to us when we are completely independent. That is a delusion. This is the meaning of Lent, beloved. God has made a covenant with us. Jeremiah 30, 22, you will be my people and I will be your God. The image is in scripture of the shepherd with the hundred sheep and one gets lost and the shepherd goes out on the search until the sheep is found. That's the reality we live with, not being on our own. All of us here, I would wager, have in our own memory a time when either we were lost or someone we love, a child maybe, or was lost. I have a memorable one. It was when I was about four years old. That I remember it at all. You, Any of you developmental psychologists will test to this. That I remember it at all bears testimony to how traumatic it was for me. My mom had taken me with her to do some shopping. We had gone downtown Orlando to Belks. Was Belks in Minnesota? Uh, I, I got the blank stare, so I figured not. But it, it was a big deal in Central Florida. The Belks department store. Now, this was way before malls. I know it's a shock to younger people. But back when the dinosaurs lived, there were no malls. Belks was a five or six story building with each floor having its own department. First floor housewares, second floor children, third floor men, you get the picture. Now, in spite of it being the dark ages where no malls existed, there were elevators. And I mean, we weren't completely backward when I was little. And for a four year old little boy, oh wow, elevators. Now, there was something to be excited about going sh sh to go shopping with mom. At that age, I loved elevators. And I'm sure that's why what happened happened. Mom must have been looking at some stuff near the elevator. The door opened. People got off. Others got on. And the door shut. I thought, wow, that is really cool. The, those people must be going place. I mean, if I got on there, I could go places. Suddenly the door opened again. What's a four-year-old to do? When my mother turned around to find me and I wasn't there, people say she made a sound that was eerily similar to a police siren. I don't know how many floors I visited. <laughs> But I must have gotten off at one of them, for when my mother finally caught up with the elevator and it opened, I was not on. And I'm not sure how many sets of unfamiliar legs I looked at, how many different shoe store shoes that I saw on people's feet, how many unfamiliar voices I heard before I realized it dawned on me. I was lost. But when I did, I am told, uh, as the people told, related to my mother, that I made a sound that was not entirely recognizable as being human. And the sound said, my world has come to an end. Someone must have taken me to an employee who went on the intercom. Will the mother of the lost boy please come to the fourth floor? Then a mother's Tear streaked face, open arms, the embrace, found. And if you had been there watching, you might have thought of the shepherd finding that lost sheep. You might have thought of the God who says, I will be your God. You might have thought of the psalm, the toddler with the broken and contrite heart. And the prayer that the toddler and all of us have, cast me not away from your presence. Beloved,
this world is just exhausting. It does feel like we're lost. If we go out into this world and listen to CNN and read the Puff Post, we can sometimes sit back and get a little objectivity and say, this is, this is, this is crazy. It wouldn't be unlike a little toddler being on an elevator and not knowing where home is. I mean, that's the way it feels sometimes to me. And I think I've known you long enough to know that for most of you, you're suffering each week. This Lent here is all that God requires of us in our suffering. To cry out in however way you do that. Help me, God. I'm lost. Because I'm standing here to tell you that, th that this God that we worship, our frantic mother shepherd looking for us, will gather us in. And this is what she will say. You are mine. You will always be mine. I will always find you. Amen.
Beloved, welcome. Welcome to everyone to the sacrament of communion. And we always proclaim all are welcome here. Jesus came to seek the lost, to heal the sick, to free the captive, and to restore those who are broken. We give thanks as we come to this sacrament for Christ's unfailing love. Let us pray. Holy God, you who make all things new, thank you for coming to us. Thank you for becoming one of us. Thank you for carrying our shame and our pain and thus opening the way to new life. We lift up our hearts to honor you, O Christ, and give you thanks. We ask that you fill our prayers for our families, for ourselves, for our world with power and fill our hearts with faith. O oh Christ, we pray for every place in our world this day where the wounds of hatred have left their mark in your mercy, heal us, O God. O Christ, we pray for every scar of division that remains in our nation. In your mercy, heal us, O God. We pray for every person who is sick in body, in mind, in spirit, in your mercy, heal us, O oh God. O oh Christ, we pray for all who work for the healing of the world, whether that be in the offices of elected representatives or at conferences that welcome people from around the world to address climate change. We pray especially today for a world infected and affected by virus. And we especially, we continue to especially pray for healthcare workers who each and every day out of compassion and a sense of duty risk their lives. We pray, oh God, oh, we pray, oh God, for all people who are victims of racism and ask that through this sacrament, we become your servants of love and compassion. Christ of the cross, see our need of your grace so hear our prayer for your mercy and come to us again. Amen. On the night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and after giving thanks for it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body. It has been broken for you. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant that is in my blood that has been shed for the forgiveness of all people. Always, always pour this cup and remember me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim you give hope, you give encouragement to the world around you that Christ is coming again to bring justice to our place. The sacrament is ready, the elements are ready. I now invite you to come and taste and see that it is good, it is very good. Has everyone in the sanctuary been fed? 
Has everyone in the world been fed? Let us pray. Great creating spirit, send us out now into the world you have loved so and love still. And make of us faithful stewards of all our lives that written upon our hearts, we become Jesus's body in our world. For we pray in the name of the cosmic Christ, even Jesus, our sovereign. Amen. We come now time for our prayers for joys and concerns. We will, I was drawn to Psalm 23 this week. And so rather than the Lord's Prayer, uh, we're going to recite Psalm 23 together. Let us use this as a prayer. Let us pray. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. She leaves me beside still waters. He restores my soul. She leads me in right paths for God's name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Let us now receive our morning offering. together. Generous God, over and over your grace sustains us. Over and over your love provides for us. Over and over your arm steadies us. We give you these gifts with gratitude and joy, thankful that you are a God over all. Amen. Please be seated. All right, if you'll please stand for the benediction. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and love of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each one of you this day and of all and all of our days. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.
you, did, you blessed me with good music. I just can't. I mean, I'm not just saying that. I, I feel more grounded because of your friends.